Welcome to Snooze with Sam. Scottish ambient sleep stories, meditations, and occasionally other things too. Although I call it something different every single time. I hope you've all had a wonderful week. But firstly, I would just like to thank you all, every last one of you, for the magic half a ton, 5,000 subscribers. Ton just because it's a nice round number. <laughs> Doesn't matter whether it's 10 or 1,000 or 10,000. 5,000 subscribers and all my patrons and especially those who've joined recently. I think we're up to 44 or 45 people now, so from the bottom of my heart, thank you. <laughs> you do know how much it means, I, I do tell you, uh, even though I don't think I could truly describe exactly what it's going to represent, uh, not just to me. So, yes, to all of you, thank you. Um, I'm so excited for everything to come. As you all know. This week and this story we go back to a classic favourite style of story for me at least. And that is dream scenarios based off some of my real life experiences. And this week we are in a cosy cottage by a loch. Now this story was inspired by an area called Dalla Vale on Sky. <laughs> no surprise there. But it means a lot because I did spend a number of years up and down the road to this very remote area that you can only walk to. There's no road. But there was a stone, or there is a stone, kind of cottage bothy down there, uninhabited, but I always wondered what it would be like if if it was brought up to contemporary standard and lived in again. Now that's what this story is all about. Now at the very end of the story I do discuss geese because we, we witnessed some flying overhead. But I originally wrote Rather than geese, I, I liken them to flying roast dinners. <laughs> but I thought, don't do that, because I don't want anybody peeing their pants at 3am. So, rather than just forget about it, I thought I'd get it out of the way now. So, get all the giggles out of your system. It's time to go to bed. So, when you are quite ready... Lie back. Take a nice deep breath. And enjoy this story. This story is simply called Cozy Cottage by the Loch. Words such as absolute freedom, invigoration, or symbiotic connection all do a fine job of trying to portray what it feels like to be amongst 
total wilderness. But none can truly paint the picture with quite enough clarity. No words can substitute the sensation of being soaked in crisp, earthy air, blown straight off the rich heather moors. No adjective can quite quantify the sharp and humbling jolt of freezing loch waters as they lap around your ankles during a paddle. No poet can truly write the smells, textures and sounds as you live them whilst foraging for fuel amongst resiny pine woodlands. And knowing all of this brings you to exactly where you can experience it all for yourself. It is a stunningly vibrant evening on the eve of spring. Two seasons are fighting for dominance, but seem locked in a clash, sloping towards the warmer of the two. The sun might be lower still, but the wild blooms of bluebells and daffodils amongst the grasses, all lend to the imminent warmer weather. This, and the fact that the air is fairly still, and the absent of turbulent breeze, keeps your bare forearms free of goosebumps and content in the mild ambience. A blue sky merges with a seasonal haze which thickens towards the horizons. In place of a harsh, direct sunlight, blends a soft, diffused glow, which gently drapes over every surface, rather than cast sharp shadows. with short, sheep-nibbled grass to your right, dropping to a stony, rounded pebble shore. The lochs stir slowly on your left-hand side. Only occasional small waves bother to make a fuss as they reach land. 
the rest of the water, too lazy to announce any arrival. This makes for some smooth, well-rounded water lullabies, which soothe your soul in real time. To be involuntarily calmed, almost against your will, is a truly humbling experience. It shows you the power of nature and being right amongst it. It feels right and our bodies and minds respond accordingly. Though too often we are not used to it. We notice how odd it can feel when our physical and spiritual selves finally relax and settle in tune with our surroundings. It is a marvellous feeling. Tiptoeing through the shallows, a stray breaker brushes your ankle, sending a fresh shiver up your back and neck. A simultaneous trill from a nearby blackbird steals your attention to the treetops. Scots Pines A sea of these sparsely needled conifers line the banks of the loch like highland palms. It's a totally personal thing, but you've always loved what Scots pines do for a landscape. Not only do they have the appearance of something much more exotic, like a bonsai on larger scale, But the woodland floors beneath them have a quality unlike any other tree. Leaving the water, you pad across the pebbles, up onto the gulf green smooth grass, and over to an area beneath one of these towering pines. Needles adorn the ground, but not so many as to feel messy. 
just enough to cushion the feet. The roots appear to spread shallow across the sandy air, elevating the topsoil and keeping it dry and not at all mushy. It's like the whole place is saying, come here, lie down and get comfy. You won't get a wet bum or get filthy from any debris. I'm clean, tidy and inviting. My bark is smooth enough to lean on comfortably and my canopy is high up so as not to obstruct your view. I'll also keep my distance from my neighbours so as to let the sunlight in, so you can bathe comfortably in its warm and toasty shine. Either way, you love what they bring to a place. Even one as already beautiful as this. All the way along the shore, these Scots pines stand tall and strong. Luscious pear and fern greens sprouting from their summits. Beneath them, slim amber trunks shine in the light of the low sun. Across the water, there is a little something else which catches the light. A small, white, thatch-roofed cottage, nestled in a little bay of its own. It's been a full day since you left it in the early hours of the morning. And quite frankly, you're excited at the prospect of cozying up for the night and getting the place all warm and toasty. A little over 20 minutes away, around the loch, there's plenty opportunity between where you are and where the cottage is to pick up some fuel for the fire. Throughout these pines' life cycles, many branches 
suffer the fate of high winds and fall to earth, drying naturally over time. A good few of them will do perfectly. Beginning your stroll along the loch's shores. All the while picking up nice bits of kindling and wood along your way. Your mind's thoughts sway and swirl very much at peace. You recall the things you saw on your day wandering the highlands. Earlier on, not long after the sun had risen above some distant clouds clinging to the peaks of the mountains on the horizon, you'd stumbled across a small adder which had positioned itself on a rock strategically placed to soak in some sunshine. So as not to startle it back into the cool damp of the dewy grass. You gave it a little berth, moving off the path. These little things are a rare sight, and a beautiful one. Perfectly camouflaged in the wintry, burnt brown bracken. Although not so much on a grey flagstone, admittedly. These shy wee snakes have a dark zigzag line running all the way up their back, looking like it had been painted there by some ancient tribe. Yes, they are venomous, but they've got little to no interest in us humans. A few hours later, when the sunshine began to lift the moisture from the heathland, you spotted a little triplet of small roe deer whilst you mooched freely in a lush forest. Again, you spotted them far enough away so as not to scare them or bring any attention to yourself. You stopped dead in your tracks, but only because one raised its head out of curiosity. It likely caught your scent. 
even if it was floral and fresh, if you do say so yourself. But remaining perfectly still, you lost its prospective interest, and it resumed to forage and snuffle through the needles and tender weeds. Very carefully and quietly, you lowered yourself onto a fallen tree trunk, lifted your flask of tea from your knapsack and poured yourself a spectator brew. There you stayed for goodness knows how long, watching and listening to the deer. There were two smaller ones, and one slightly larger, perhaps a buck. If there were any antlers, it was difficult to tell them amongst the stray twigs protruding from the pines. How much more petite they are compared to red deer and their respective styes. They must be about half the size, or around a third of the weight. Small, delicate, and frankly adorable little faces emit a sweet, juvenile quality, which belies their wildness and wisdom. Well, saying that, some of them do make a habit of bounding out of the trees into the path of your oncoming car, though never coming too close, thankfully. You enjoy assuming they're just excited to see you. So make the effort to throw themselves in your general direction, hooves splayed like a hyper dog greeting its owner. All throughout the beautiful afternoon, your hit list of flora and fauna grew and grew as you encountered lovely wild orchids, cowslip, clover, tasty wild garlic and sour citrusy sorrel. The latter pair you couldn't resist picking a few generous sprigs of. Such are their quite intoxicating flavours.
they would make for a sensational salad garnish for your dinner. But not only did you spy lovely vegetation, giant snails made an appearance, as did the odd field mouse, vole, buzzard, and heron, or lurky turkey as you often call them. But the sight of the day came in the shape of the humble common toad. With it being almost spring, these little fellows are everywhere, and you stumbled across one particular freshwater pond, fed by a turbulent stream, which housed hundreds of them. At first, they were actually quite difficult to spot in the water, as only their eyes and or head poke out just a little bit, with their lower bodies resting at an angle underneath the surface. Once you see one, take a breath and dive beneath the surface. Suddenly your eyes train on the dozens of other wee toad domes poking out from the water. Time passes quickly, lost in your thoughts, and before you know it, you've rounded the end of the loch and are but a short distance from your cottage. Minding the odd squelchy patches of bog, you step, jump, and hop from tussock to tussock, rounding the last of the little shoreline headlands. Firewood stocked bag in tow. sun now to your back, the heat on your neck is very welcome, an early evening chill looms, and so a cosy cottage beckons ever closer. And with that burning desire, your small whitewashed cottage, complete with thick thatched roof, rounds into view, positioned delicately on the easing loch shore.
a simple and perfect representation of what many would describe as their dream remote cottage. This little two room stone box and straw hat oozes fairy tale. From the outside, a deep and tall crosspane window adorns the frontage, each side of the main door, reflecting the deep blue and orange sky. On the left hand window ledge lie small potted plants in an array of tiny tins and terracotta vessels. Some plants droop and pour over the ledge like a waterfall whilst others climb up and around the perimeter of the window frame, like the miniature ivy. Above the front door, a small wooden porch leans out offering a little shelter from the elements. And hanging from each corner of this triangulated canopy dangles two candle lanterns which flicker softly in the evening glow. The roof is a marvel. Somewhat oversized in appearance compared to a conventional slate or tile offering. The foot thick and robust looking thatch has stood the test of time well. It's difficult not to envisage the labour and skill which has evidently been poured into the roof. Stepping up to the front of the cottage, the centerpiece of the house stands upright before you. The front door. made from a hundred pieces of driftwood, all lovingly bonded together with great dexterity and prowess. This arcing masterpiece exudes the energy of a wild sea. Nestled in the uppermost portion of the door is something of such bewildering beauty. A stained glass porthole 
of blues, greens and ambers, depicting an image of a red deer stag, standing on the shores of a loch not too dissimilar to the one behind you. Running your fingertips across the small window, the lumps and bumps of the perfectly imperfect craftsmanship ignite your soul. There is a lot of love poured into this cottage. It reflects the land on which it was built in a way no other place can compare to. Sliding the chunky brass deadlock from left to right. sharp clunk of metal on wood frees the door off its latch and the driftwood art piece swings inwards. You are greeted by a mostly dark very small hallway with brick red tiles, an old oak sideboard, and a grubby boot rack. Once the door is closed again, the room plunges into dimness. Aside from the colourful, iridescent glows emitting from the stained glass. Seeing it from the inside, looking out, the whole piece lights up with an extraordinary amount of detail. The hide of the stag. The water of the loch. The ruddy brackens and heathers. And the moody sky. All have their own unique visual textures. You untie and kick off your muddy boots, placing them on the rack before turning to your left again and entering the adjacent room through a plain pine door. Just as you left it, the living room seems to breathe an empathetic sigh of relief welcoming you in, feeling your weariness and need for rest. A 
a stone hearth in the far corner houses a free-standing wood burner in front of which deep pile rugs spread out over an old time-polished oak floor the four walls all have their own character and colours but the theme is of chalky nautical tones some magnolia some seagrass and some duck egg blue here and there On the far wall, a large porcelain basin fit for the finest country kitchen sits within a timber frame and sideboard, fulfilling the role of workspace. Above it, a rear window of similar proportions to the front pours in light and offers an indirect glow to the kitchen and very petite dining set. Each wall wears tastefully placed artwork, ranging from seascape watercolours to rich oil ancestral portraits to almost contemporary wildlife subjects on bold landscapes. In such a small room, it would be easy for it to feel awfully cluttered and claustrophobic, but it is quite the contrary. Minimal furniture, usefully placed in strategic arrangements make for a cosy but soothing place to spend time. First things first, and without any further faffing, you slide your bag from your shoulders emptying the wood out onto the hearth and begin to arrange a fire in the stove atop some scrunched up old newspaper. Taking to a knee and acquiring some matches. You strike a few and light a couple of corners of the paper. Flames take hold quite quickly, relieving you of your duties. Soon, the paper catches the branches 
assuming the crackles of happy wood. You place two larger logs on top to gift fuel for the hours to come. Next up, as the light fades steadily outside, some candles. You have a few favourites of the dozens which populate the room. On the mantelpiece, a heather and wild berries number gets the first match, followed by Highland Gorse and Scots Pine, one which you keep on a little table beside your chair near the front window. In only a few short minutes, the room is filled with many tantalising but subtle fragrances, all singing lyrically of the Scottish Highlands. The fireplace, which now roasts away contently, circulates its own scent of pine resins and gentle smoke. There's something missing though, and it could only be one thing. And so with a swoop and flurry of muscle memory movements, you hoist the aluminium kettle from the stove and decant some water into it from the sink. The water is nearly golden in colour as it runs in off the hills, filtered by the peat, giving it its distinctive coppery tones. It is perfectly clean and very tasty, and makes for a wonderful cup of tea. There's quite literally something rich and earthy to its flavour. After only a few minutes, the kettle whistles and whirs away after a brief stint atop the stove. Favourite mug acquired and tea bag sourced from a nearby shelf. You fill it up with water and give it a wee stir or two with a teaspoon, initiating the brew. Clutching your sizzling mug 
with both chilly hands. You sidle over towards your chair by the window. It's a lovely squishy thing, your chair. With just enough room to tuck your knees up to your chest and hoist your feet up off the ground. Like all the best chairs, this one is a lovely blend of tartan shades, compiled of mostly blues and purples, but with the odd crosshatch of red. With a slight wing back on each side, it's perfect for those luscious afternoon naps, in which your head feels heavy, desperate for something to rest on. Arranging a few small cushions, just how you like them. You slide into the cosy little seat, tuck your knees up, and pull a nearby fleece throw over your legs to keep them warm. This is your favourite spot in the whole world. From here, gazing through the tall pane window, you can see everything outside as it unfolds. The shimmering loch's surface. The warm glow of the treetops on the far side. And of course, on this lovely, hazy spring night. The hovering, setting sun. which just now bathes everything it touches in gold. Through the glass, like a magnifying glass, your face soaks in the warmth from the final rays. But not only does it bask you, but also the living room, as the light reaches into every nook and cranny it possibly can. Although the light is waning, It's these evenings which feel like they'll never end. That moment in light which is perfect. Not too harsh. Not too dim. 
just somewhere in the middle. A quality which you beg not to end. If only it stayed like this, with every little thing soothed by a soft, hazy smoulder. As you spot some geese flying high in the sky, all coordinating some loose V formation. Your thoughts are caught in the web of their movements. The slow, deliberate flaps of great beating wings Slow time as it happens. Your conscience is entranced, wrapped up in the simplistic beauty of some wild animal merely existing in plain sight. Time seems to stand still. And in the company of the crackling fire, whispering candles, steaming cup of tea, and setting sun, You swear it really does. <laughs>